Hey, what's up, everybody? Maddie Wills checking in for another episode of Wellbeing Wednesday with Maddie Wills, of course, brought to you by Metro Health and all the good folks over there, where every so often we talk to a different representative from Metro Health just about various health-related issues, well-being-related issues, and everything in between. So without further ado, today we'll bring in, or right now, we'll bring in today's guest, which is none other than Dr. Adrian S. Lindsay. Dr. Lindsay, welcome to the show, and thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and kind of, uh, you know, just dropping some knowledge on our listeners. How you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, thank you for having me today. Um, very well uh, interested in our talk today. Uh, as a person from Akron, Ohio native, um, I'm very much uh, into uh, this discussion and talking with uh, our, and educating our people uh, in the area. Dope. Shout out to everybody. Of course, we love Akron. Uh, shout out to everybody down there. And, you know, today we're going to talk about something that's very serious, as we do every time we, we link with you guys at Metro. But it's going to be colon cancer screening awareness. Now, you know, not to give too much info about me, but I will be 41 this year. And I'm getting to that point where I know a lot of these screenings and things of that nature are, are kind of coming around. Um, as I've talked to with my doctor, uh, with doc, with uh, Metro Health quite often over the last year or so. But, um, you know, we do like to get this information out there. And you are, of course, an expert on that. And that's why you're here. So before we kind of dive into that, though, why don't you just tell everybody, you know, kind of your journey, how you got to your position within Metro and, you know, um, your, you know, your life. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, I grew up in the, the Akron area. Uh and kind of uh, through uh, some uh, interesting interactions or meetings, I should say, with uh, some other like black doctors and other doctors growing up, I uh, got into wanting to do medicine. Uh, through med school, I uh, did in Cincinnati, so I'm a big uh, Ohio, uh, all around Ohio type of guy, uh, and got into uh, gastroenterology or GI uh, and liver diseases. So that's uh, my biggest uh, uh, practices is uh, liver disease, uh, uh, managing the liver, as well as colon cancer screening um, and GI-related things. Uh, and, you know, being a person who grew up in New Northeast Ohio, I wanted to come back and practice in uh, the area that I grew up and uh, help, out with the, help out with the people in this area. Dope. And, and you're not the first one uh, that I've heard, you know, in our conversations with Metro to where people that have actually grown up in Ohio, um, maybe have, have moved around a bit or whatnot, but they, they love to come back and help out the people here. And I, I love to hear that. So, you know, Cleveland especially is always um, is often the butt of people's jokes. But I love when, when we come and help help our own people out. So without further ado, let's kind of get into today's conversation. Right. So. Of course, we're talking about colon cancer screening awareness. So the first obvious question, at least for me, is who is at risk for colon cancer? Right. Uh, so uh, the easy answer for that is uh, everyone. Um, so uh, there's kind of like two different groups. There's people who have uh, what we call like a normal risk or average risk. Uh, so uh, colon cancer uh, usually arises uh, in the mid, mid to late age. So we generally recommend starting screening at the age of 45 um, and going on until the mid 70s uh, depending on uh, different uh, different factors as well uh, now there's a, a second group of uh, people that are a little bit uh, higher risk so individuals who have a family history of colon cancer if uh, there's other members in their family that they know of uh, that makes uh, polyps um, which are kind of these uh, precancerous. Uh, some of them are precancerous, but there's different things that your colon can make uh, that can turn into uh, to cancer. Um, and then, uh, and then the second kind of group of high risk people are people who have uh, inflammatory bowel diseases, uh, known as Crohn's and uh, ulcerative colitis. Got you, got you. And you know, oftentimes in our conversations, uh, we learn that sometimes things affect different people at a higher rate. So with that being said, you know, how does colon cancer disproportionately impact black and brown people in our community? Yes. Uh, so uh, for the black and brown people, uh, or I should say our people in the community, uh, right. we have a, a higher risk of both uh, 
of being diagnosed with cancer as well as a higher risk of dying from cancer. Uh, so um, according to uh, recent studies uh, from the American Cancer Society, uh, that African Americans have a 20% uh, higher risk of developing colorectal cancer, and then 40% about uh, from dying from cancer. Um, you know, and uh, most of these risks um, are affected uh, because you know of access to care, uh, and also not necessarily getting screening as appropriate, which there's multiple different reasons for that as well. Um, from the dying from cancer perspective, is more so because since people uh, in our, uh, since African Americans, minority groups of uh, brown people as well, uh, since we don't uh, get our colon cancer screening uh, as, as recommended, uh, when people are diagnosed with colon cancer compared to other groups, uh, their ca their cancer tends to be more advanced or spreading mm. to other organs and things like that, uh, which makes the um, the higher death rate. So, you know, moving along, why is screening for colon cancer so important? Uh, so uh, it's very important because, you know, colon cancer is uh, the third most common uh, diagnosed cancer in the U.S., as well as the third most uh, common cause of uh, death, uh, cancer-related death in the U.S. as well. Um, and uh, not only just that, but it's also one of the most uh, preventable cancers that we have that we can avoid. Um, so that's also another big reason for why we uh, strive so hard to get people to get screening for it. So just to kind of steer off course just a bit, why is it, um, why is it more, one of the more, you know, easier ones to deal with? Uh, so it's, uh, so because of this is so like, uh, like I mentioned things like polyps. Um, so uh, from the way how we've kind of tracked how colon cancer progresses compared to different, uh, different cancers is that uh, you have these different uh, things, which uh, we call our polyps. They, um, they're kind of outgrowths within the, within the colon. Uh, they can uh, be different sizes, different shapes. Uh, but the thing is that in most cases, they're pretty normal when seen. So when we're doing some of the modalities, such as like a colonoscopy, uh, we can see them, we can remove them. Uh, and then, you know, uh, we can talk about uh, when to come back for a repeat screening and things like that a little bit later. But um, we found that uh, these things like these polyps can grow over a period of time and turn into cancer. And so uh, if we're able to remove those, uh, remove these things, then the, the rate of developing cancer goes down uh, drastically. And I, I, I thank you for saying that. I, I like, I, I think I felt like I needed to point that out because sometimes if people hear that it's a little bit easier to deal with, then maybe they'd be more apt to, you know, making sure that they're good in that area. So thank you for that. Uh, so what types of colon cancer screenings are available with Metro Health? Uh, right. Uh, so here at Metro Health, uh, we have we have uh, three main kinds. Um, so the first uh, is the one that probably uh, almost everyone has heard about are the colonoscopies. Um, so this is a, uh, it's a procedure. Um, uh, we, you know, like, you get the sedation, you kind of out, the, uh, and we go inside the colonoscopy uh, with a uh, uh, with a colonoscope, which is kind of like a long tube with a camera and a light at the end, uh, and uh, we check the colon from you know it's like your your bottom all the way up to where it meets your small intestines, uh, and we take a good look, looking at the walls, kind of like uh, going through a tunnel, um, or uh, as I always make fun of my mom. Uh, the fact that I play video games for so long is just like playing the video mm -hmm. game. Uh, so for all those gamers out there, you are practicing for a career. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we're taking a look. We see the polyps and we can remove those. Um, and so that's kind of the traditional or what we call gold standard way. Um, and usually we recommend uh, for people who, uh, who don't have, who, who, we don't five, who we don't find polyps in, uh, we do it about every 10 years. Um, and then uh, depending on risk factors with like family history, uh, the number of polyps, the size of the polyps and the kind of polyps, uh, the, uh, we recommend uh, returning to do a colonoscopy on a various different uh, time frame between anywhere between one year to, to seven years time. Um, now there's uh, for, uh, for uh, those who 
are a little bit um, more into uh, non-invasive tests, we have uh, two different uh, stool-based tests um, uh, that are done. So one of them uh, just tests for blood in the stool. Um, and so usually if, it, if that test is negative, we recommend doing it, uh, doing that yearly. Um, and then there's a second uh, stool-based test that, te that checks uh, DNA uh, as well as blood. And so like the DNA uh, picks up like different DNA that uh, we have uh, found to uh, increase risk of colon, of developing colon cancer. Um, and with and individuals who do that test, um, if it's negative, recommend anywhere between one to three years. Um, but if they're positive, they both, uh, we both, re uh, in those groups, for both of them, we recommend doing a colonoscopy uh, to look to see if there's any polyps that we can remove or go from there. Got you, got you. Again, he's Dr. Lindsay with Metro Health. I'm Addie Wills. And our final question, doctor, is how often should someone get screened for colon cancer? Uh, so, yes. Yeah, so it's based upon different uh, your different risks. So uh, generally for people who are what we call average risk, so they um, have no family history of colon cancer. Uh, no one in their family uh, makes polyps. Uh, and on their colonoscopy, uh, they're going the colonoscopy route. Their colonoscopy was was negative, as in there was no polyp seen. But uh, we recommend screening every 10 years. Uh, gotcha. Then, uh, yeah. Uh, for people who have family history, uh, it will be around five years. Um, and then people who have uh, uh, like uh, IBDs, such as Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, uh, that uh, is a very different topic and depends upon uh, their, the, how they're doing with those. Um, and then when it comes to the uh, stool-based uh, screening tests, uh, uh, those, uh, as long as that they, as long as they continue to be negative, you'll do them uh, depending on the two uh, between uh, every year to uh, every three years. Gotcha, gotcha. So, a, a lot of really good information. You know, one thing I like to point out every episode is, you know, if this information is relevant to a family member, a friend, a coworker, whoever. Please share the video with them. You know, uh, everything that's on the internet basically lives there forever. So uh, wherever you're watching it right now, just hit that share button and go ahead and send it to them. And then also, we like to point out that, you know, if you'd like to make an appointment with a primary care provider within Metro Health, all you have to do is call 216-696-3876 or sign into my chart. Again, that's 216-696-3876 or sign into your my chart. Uh, Dr. Lindsay, thank you so much for all this really, really good information. Is there anything that you want to uh, kind of touch on real quick before we get out of here? Is there anything that you want to highlight? Because, uh, again, all of it was very useful uh, information. I think people will really appreciate it. Um, so, yes, yeah, so, uh, just uh, kind of like highlighting things like uh, so first off, you know, you know uh, as you mentioned, you know, so when you when you start getting close to that age of 45, um, start thinking about these different um, screening modalities, which ones are right for you. Because again, like uh, we have different tests and different ways to screen because uh, the biggest thing is like we want everyone screened. Um, and so, you know, uh, all of these options, we increase the options for that. Um, and then the, the second plug I have to say is that, uh, you know, uh, we will also be at the Minority Men's Health Fair in April. Uh, so if you guys have any other questions or want to talk to us in per, um, person, we will be having booths talking about colon cancer screening um, and can talk about polyps and all those types of things in, in person as well. Um, oh, good stuff. Well, thanks again, Dr. Lindsay. Uh, I'm sure I'll see you there in April at the, uh, at the health fair. And of course, we always appreciate every single person that has come through Wellbeing Wednesday from Metro Health. Uh, a lot of good conversations, and we're going to keep them going. So make sure you, you guys stay tuned, okay? And uh, that's it. We'll see you guys next episode. Thanks for uh, checking out another episode of Wellbeing Wednesday with Maddie Wills, brought to you by Metro Health. Thank you. Thank you.